One of the most important functions of a logo is to create and promote brand awareness. This is one of the main reasons why companies choose to invest in an animated logo. Animated logos are both more memorable and more recognizable to consumers than static logos. It may take a consumer several interactions with a static logo in order to have any recognition whatsoever, while an animated logo will often imprint immediately in a consumer's mind. Keeping that in our mind, let's design a minimal logo animation inside of After Effects without using any kind of plugins. I am Nikhil from DopeMotions.com, and without wasting any more time, let's jump into After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. Call this main as our main com 1920 by 1080. Let's make this 60 FPS. 10 seconds it looks good. Hit OK. Let's hit Control Y on the keyboard to create a new solid. Call this BG for background. And I'll go into Windows. I'll find my Effects and Preset tab and then type in fill double click to apply that up and for the color i'll go with a nice darker desaturated purple for the background hit ok and that is looking pretty good now firstly let's create that spirally thing that appears in the background and to create that select the pen tool we don't need any fill for this so i'll set the fill to none we just need the stroke. I'll set this to white for now. And pixels, I set this to one just for the moment. Then go ahead and turn on the title action save. This will help us to create a, you know, almost a proper spiral. So I'll click in the center and try to create a nice swirly spiral. So I'll click and drag to get this kind of nice handles. I'll cl click and drag like that. And I'm doing this very roughly. You can take your time. I'm just going to create a rough spiral first and then adjust it. So something like this. Something like this. Now I can go ahead and tweak the spiral a bit. So I'll just tweak this a bit like that. Try to make it as proper as you can, as precise as you can actually. You can take your time. I'm doing this a bit roughly. And yes, that is looking pretty good for the moment. I'll select the layer, call this stroke underscore 01. And increase the stroke size to around 200 pixels. Then go into the properties of the shape layer, go into contents, shape one, stroke and change the line cap to rounded cap. So we have a nice rounded circle and now I can adjust it. So I get a better view of the shape. You can see it looks pretty good. This one, I'll tweak this up a little bit and try to make it as precise as possible. I'm just gonna eyeball this for the moment. Something like so. Um, yeah, that looks good. Let's try to increase the stroke and let's see if we fill it up properly. Yep, I think I need to tweak this one a bit. So I'll make it a bit more curvy. And bring this a bit more closer like so. Okay, that is looking good for now. So let's create a keyframe on the stroke width. Set this to 200. Go around one second and 30 frames and set this to 500. So now we have a very simple animation which looks something like this. Now if you're not satisfied with the shape, you can anytime go ahead and tweak this up. So I'll just tweak it right here a bit. Okay, 
Then going to add and add a trim path. Then we can animate the trim path basically just like so. So I'll set this to zero, create a keyframe, go to maybe two seconds and set this to 100. So we have a very simple animation as you can see. Maybe I'll increase the stroke width a bit to maybe 400. That is a bit too much. I'll bring that down to 300. And I'll adjust this path a bit so that it doesn't look choppy. So I'll put it somewhere around there. Okay. So now we have this very nice swirly look. Let's add some scale animation to this. So I'll hit S, create a keyframe on the scale, go to two seconds and scale this up just so that it covers up the complete frame. Select it and hit F9 to easy ease the keyframes, hit U. So we can see all the keyframes, select them all and hit F9 to easy ease them. So we basically have a very simple animation as you can see. Now right here, I'll bring down the stroke width to 250. And right here at 20 frames, I'll bring this keyframe right here where it turns to 500. So from 250 to 500. For the scale, I'll increase the scale amount to 140. Bring this one right over here at one second. Or maybe let's go to one second and 30 frames so that it covers up the complete frame at the proper time. Okay, that is looking good. Let's select it and hit Ctrl D to duplicate it. Hit R to bring down the rotation properties and rotate it by 180 degrees. So now we have two shapes covering up the complete frame, which is looking very nice. Let's create a new composition for our logo where we, where we can drag and drop in our logo. I'll call this logo comp and hit OK, drag in a logo that I have. And I'll scale this down a bit like so. Let's go into the main comp, drag and drop in the logo composition. There we go. Let's scale this down a bit, just like maybe 75 should be good. And then I'll select the second stroke and pick a color from the logo. So something like that looks good. And for the second stroke, I'll pick the blue color. So that is looking pretty cool actually. Then what I'm going to do is select both the strokes, hit Ctrl Shift C to precompose them and call this, let's call this stroke, move all attributes, hit OK and hit S to bring down the scale properties. And let's go to maybe 30 frames, create a keyframe on the stroke composition, go back and set this to zero. Select it and hit F9 to ease, ease the keyframe and let's see how it looks. That is looking great. But right here you can see we, uh, a stroke get cuts up at the bottom. So I'll turn on the collapse transformation and that should fix this up. That is looking good. Now let's hide the logo for the moment and create a shape which is going to be a background for our logo. So I'll go right here and select the polygon tool, create a shape just like that. We don't need any stroke, we just need the fill. I'll keep it white for the moment. Go into polystar 1, polystar path 1 and set the points to 4 so we get kind of a square and bring down the duration to maybe 45 increase the size. Also, I'll bring the radius up just like so and bring up the outer roundness just to give it a nice blobby look. And that is looking great. Let's call this shape. Put it below, turn on our logo 
and that is looking very nice actually let's put our logo in the center just like so actually let's align the logo comp into the center let's go into logo comp and then put this one into the center all right that is looking good let's animate this shape so what I can do is I'll go to one second and then move the stroke composition at one second. Select the shape and move that back. Hit S to bring down the scale properties. Go maybe right here at one second and 20 frames. Create a keyframe on the scale. Go back and set this to zero. So now we have a pretty simple animation let's select this keyframe and hit f9 to easy ease that particular keyframe and then i'm going to use a bounce expression to get that get this nice bouncy look for our animation so i'll select the expression hit ctrl a to select the expression ctrl c to copy it and you can download this expression from the description box below also if you want the complete project file you can download that from my patreon page to which i'll provide the link in the description below so I'll hold Alt and click on the scale stopwatch and hit Ctrl V to paste the expression. Now we have this nice bouncy animation which is looking very very nice. The same animation I'm going to add it onto my logo as well. That is the logo comp. So I'll select this layer first of all hit U so you can see the keyframes. I'll go right here hit S. Create a keyframe go back. Set this to zero select it f9 to ease, ease it hold alt click it Control v to paste the expression and then i'm going to display this a bit so we get two different animation for our logo and the logo shape as you can see this is looking very very nice now let's go ahead and create the starting of our animation that is the dot hitting together so I'll select the ellipse tool and let's create an ellipse just like that align it into the center let's bring down the size to around somewhere around let's go with 35 that looks good I'll call this dot underscore one hit OK and let's select this layer hit P to bring down the position create a keyframe go back to let's say 30 frames and pull this down holding shift just like that select this layer select the keyframes hit F9 go into the graph editor right click and select edit speed graph select this point and drag the handle to the right just like so so we have a nice hitting animation as you can see we need to match the timing a bit so i'll move this forward put this behind or below actually so now we have this hit and this pop-up animation as you can see maybe i'll move this a bit more forward yep that is looking great now i'll hit s to bring down the scale properties unlink this Go right here, create a keyframe, go back and create a keyframe. And then what I'm going to do is right over here, I'll increase the height a bit just to give it a nice stretchy look. So you can see we get this very nice burst effect. Then I can select the layer, hit Control Shift C to pre-compose it, call it dot hit control D to duplicate it and hit R to bring down the rotation properties rotated by 180 degrees so now we have two dots maybe I'll bring down the size of this one a little bit so I'll make this 25 I think that is much better and I'll pick the colors from the logo so what I can do is a real quick way to do it is select the color we will select the blue one and add a fill onto the dots 
So I'll go to effects and preset, drag and drop the fill on dot one. Just select this. Select this nice green color. Copy the fill from your control C and paste it onto the second dot and make it a nice green color. So let's check out an animation so far. And as you can see, it's looking very, very nice. Let's go ahead and add some text. So I'll select the text tool and I'm going to type in maybe www.yourname.com Not tower name, it's your name. Make this nice and white. All right, make this a bit smaller. Increase the spacing a bit. I'll change this to next uh, bowl. Maybe that looks much better. And then let's animate this one as well. So I'll go right over here. Let's actually select the logo, hit U so we can see the keyframes. And the same exact thing. So I'll hit P to create, hit P to bring down the position, create a keyframe on the position, go back, bring this up, and hit F9 to ease, ease that particular keyframe. And let's copy paste the code, the expression actually, not the code. Control V. Go right over here. Hit T to bring down the opacity, create a keyframe. Go back, set this to zero. And now we have a nice text animation as well. Maybe I'll just display this a bit. And there we have a nice simple and minimal looking logo animation that you can create to present to your company, your brand, whatever that you want. Also, if you want to add that nice small dotted accents or line animation, whatever that you can call it, if you want to add those nice pop-ups, I have already created a tutorial on it with the name motion graphic accent. I'll mention the link down in the description below so you can watch the tutorial to create some amazing accent that you can add to your logo animation. And I hope this was a helpful tutorial. I hope you create your own logo animations and you can tag me on Instagram or, you know, send me a message on Instagram and show your work. So yeah, that is a wrap for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then make sure to subscribe, comment and like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care and always stay raw, stay creative.